Hey everyone, Paul C here for PeaceMeg TV. We're going to take a look at the new Revolution Slider update that's come out recently. This is version 5, so it's a major update to the incredibly popular software that's used on tens of thousands of WordPress sites. What we're going to do is we're going to have an overview of the way that the interface has changed, take a look at some of the features, some of the things that have changed throughout the entire way it sets up and operates, and just have a little sort of first glance at how this software is updated in this major revision. So let's take a look at the new software. Now when you first go into your Revolution slider, it's not going to look that dissimilar to the previous version. The home page is laid out pretty much the same. You can see you've got some update history, newsletter, etc. and all the sliders you currently have created. You've got some nice little sort of hover effects that give you some additional information. So if you want to create a new slide, you can create a new slide. You can create a new template. You can import. You can specify how you want to view your individual sliders you've already got created. You can sort them. You can filter them. You can do you know some typical kind of things on there. You also notice that we now have the options to add new slides. We can update the settings or we can edit with any of the, uh, the slides we've got created. So let's go in and take a look at some of the new features that have been added and some of the ways that this has been changed and streamlined. So we'll come in and we'll just go in and edit this particular slider. Now the first thing you're going to see when you load into this is you've got a whole new range of creating content sources. We can pull information in from posts on your website, um, specific posts, Flickr streams, Instagram, WooCommerce, Facebook, YouTube streams, Vimeo. There's a lot of new features have been added to this, and it's, it's kind of got a nice streamlined interface. You look on the right-hand side, you see we've got smaller amount of options available than the previous version. So again, you're going to find that a lot of these options, they're not taken out, they've just been moved around to make a more streamlined interface. There have been some major updates to the way things work on you, and some of the features have been taken out. And taking a look on the feedback on Theme Forest or Code Canyon, you can kind of see that there's a lot of people having some problems with this early iteration of version 5 because they've stripped out some of these different features from earlier versions. So if you are looking to update your Revolution slider to the latest version, I would 100% recommend that you do this on a development server or duplicate of your site just so you can test it out to ensure that you don't have any teething problems with this new version. And any problems you may encounter can either be helped out by using the Theme Forest or Code Canyon forum, or you can actually work through and make the changes yourself. I found a couple of different things that were problematic on my test installation of this, but it took me five minutes without reading through any manuals to quickly jump in, make some adjustments. They were kind of self-explanatory what the problems were. The slider was going full screen where I didn't need it to be. There was a link on there for the Google font, which wasn't correct, instead of actually embedding the font. You know, you can kind of go in and you can see where these, these problems lie. But obviously, on a live server, that opens up a whole different sort of, uh, shall we say, amount of problems that you could potentially have. So always test it on a development server before moving over to updating your settings on your live server. Anyway, so you can see that we've got a lot of ways of bringing information in. You can see we've got... In the same fashion as we've had before, we can name the slider, we can give it an alias, and we can see the short code for it. All there from before, just a little bit streamlined, a little bit nicer layer, a little bit more modern and fresh. But then what you're going to see underneath is you can specify three different types of sliders. You can have a standard slider, a hero scene, or a carousel slider. And you can even then pull in predefined templates to make creating new slides quick and easy. You can save out anything you do as a preset, so you can call that back up at any time on a project you're working on. So again, another great time-saving feature that's going to speed up creating, editing, and working with slides. You can see if we switch between any of these three different types, it brings up different templates. And again, like I say, you can save out your own templates, so you can do you know, a whole host of complex layouts and things like that. And then you can come in and, and adjust them and tweak them and save them out as templates. What is useful underneath there? We've got the slide layout. So you can see we've got auto, full width, and full screen. Again, we've seen these things in previous versions. It's just now be become sort of a more integrated, more designed, streamlined kind of interface. And a, a welcome addition to it has definitely got to be these uh, sort of examples of what it's going to look like on the four kind of main devices, your desktop, your notebook, your tablets, and your mobiles. 
you can come in you've got advanced options you can do things you can hide the overflow you can you know keep the, the aspect ratio uh, there, there's lots of things you can kind of tweak on there you can customize and build you know we've got a whole host, host of options we can scroll to the options we can edit our slides we can embed the slider we can save our settings and we can even start doing some custom css and custom javascript you know nothing that uh, is is kind of too you haven't seen before your general settings and this is again where they've kind of streamlined the whole interface you've now got multiple tabs that have relevant information or settings grouped together and you have great help over every single aspect so you can see everything has its own little help section we switch over to default so you can see everything tells me what it's going to do if I make a change to it so we've got our layout and visual you know take a look through these yourselves kind of see the the things that are going on in there nothing you haven't seen before so that's the basic settings for all of your slides so let's go and take a look now at some individual slides and how that's changed and how the interface has definitely improved to make your animation and your complex slide layouts a quick and easy affair okay so we're back on the the revolution slider homepage and back to our list of slides and I'm just going to click to edit the actual slides themselves this time as opposed to the settings for all of our slides. Now you're going to see this has had a, a major sort of update facelift that's going to give a very nice way of working. Everything is laid out in a very logical fashion. You've got a much nicer looking interface that will actually show your representation of your slides, your timeline below it. One of the nice features that I kind of come across is if I click on one of these layers, we can scroll through and see the effect of all of the different things that we're doing. So we can scrub through in the same way that you would with your video editing software using Premiere or something like that. You can scroll through, you can see exactly what's going to happen as quickly or as slowly as you want. So you can check out how everything's going to hang together, the duration, etc. And you can create your, like I say, your complicated layouts. You've got a nice layout then for aligning all your information. All of your previous uh, fonts and effects and things like that are all evident on you. You know, you can kind of align things, which if you're like me and you do this on a daily basis, just aligning slides to the center, to the left, and you know, lining everything up is or has been an absolute chore. And it's, it's great to see that they've actually introduced these alignment features so you can align your media it's just going to speed up your everyday process of, of creating these slides, multi-layer slides. It's just going to be, in. it's just fantastic. Okay, so we've got things at the top. Again, we can see we've got source setting, parallax effects, the Ken Burns effect. We can go through general settings, slide animation, links and SEO. Good to see they're bringing search engine optimization facilities into this. And we can have slide settings. Masses of, of slides we've got, or options we've got available. Animation, loop animation, visibility. You know, the, the cool thing is we can sort of go through and see how these things are all going to work. There's just a whole host of features on here that's, that they've just made the interface so much nicer to work with. There's a lot less scrolling. It's one of the things you, you kind of found that if you were adjusting animation settings, you were scrolling up and down, you were minimizing and maximizing different, uh, different tabs on the interface or different sort of... Uh, accordion screens on the interface and it got a little bit time consuming and a little bit clunky so it's great to see that they've gone back and spent a lot of time creating an interface that looks like it's going to be a much better way of working it's going to speed up your development process and speed up the time of working on these kind of things incredibly you can see we've got different kinds of visibility on different types of devices we can hide it under a certain width again great things if you've got something like this you don't want it to display when you're dealing with mobile devices you can disable it, you can hide it under a certain width. So we can say, yes, we want to do that and specify what width you want to do it on. You know, there's a lot of different sort of options we've got available to us inside this interface now. So I've got to say that on my first impression, I haven't had time to sort of play about with this too much, but the first impression, definitely favorable. They've spent a lot of time going through the interface, looking at how it's going to speed up your process of working with you know, multiple slides, complicated slides. You know, when you start to get into animation that has 10, 12, 15 layers, all different timings and things like that, this is going to become a godsend where you can scrub through and you can see exactly where and when everything kind of comes on the screen, how it animates, the different effects you're going to use with it. That's just, that's just fantastic to see. 
So, as I said earlier on in the video, there are some teething problems with this software, and I would definitely recommend checking it out. You know, if you've already purchased this, you can download it and you can test on your development server. It's not going to cost you anything, which is a great way. Like I say, it's, it's, it's great that you're not going to have to pay because it's a new revision and it's a major revision. So download it, install it on a test server, you know, whether that's a new site or a test site or, you know, a duplicate of your existing site. Try it out. Get over some of the teething problems you're going to find where you, you swapped over to the new version of it. But I'm sure you will find that the more you use this and once you've got past those little problems, you're going to find the interface is going to be a much better way of working. It's going to speed up your process. I'm looking forward to using it myself personally. Anyway, I've been Paul C. from PeaceMag TV. This has been a brief overview of the new Revolution Slider version 5. It's just come out in the last couple of days. If you found this useful video, so if you found this video useful even, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button below. If you've got any comments on this video or any other videos that we've created for this series, please put them in the comment section below. And if you've got any ideas for videos you'd like to see in the future, leave me a comment. I check everything you write on there and I try to get back on anything that's commented on. We love hearing from you. Until next time, take care and good luck in developing your websites.